Lesson 36, we continue reading from the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, Chapter 2, Sutra 16. The misery which is not yet come can and is to be avoided. This is one of my favorite sutras. Because if only we pay a little bit of attention, there's a lot of misery that can be avoided. Practical examples. I never answer the phone when I drive. Research shows that people who are on the phone while driving even worse when they're texting while driving, they, their driving is worse than people who are drunk. And you can see in the statistics also that since people started driving like 100 years ago, 120 years ago, the number of deadly accidents per 100,000 inhabitants has, <coughs> has gradually decreased. Government builds better roads, introduces uh, new traffic regulations to make traffic safer. So the infrastructure improves, becomes more logical, more commonsensical, cars become safer. Uh, drivers are being educated. So when you look at the statistics from that we started driving until recently, the line went down. Every year, less deadly accidents per 100,000 inhabitants. But it started going up again. When? With the introduction of the mobile phone. Many accidents are caused by people being on the phone. The misery which has not come can and must be avoided. Patanjali is telling you here, if you, can, if you can expect misery to occur, you're stupid if you let it happen. That's really what he's saying here. You know that it is not safe to be on the phone while driving. Leave alone, it's even worse, texting. So just don't. What is the problem here? It's ego. Because when you have your phone uh, in the console lying next to you and you hear the, uh, the, the, the sound of the notification of a message, it is your ego that, want, that wants you to know who is it that is paying attention to you? Who is it that wants to communicate with you? And at that moment you just have to say, well, you, maybe you can take a quick glance at your phone, but then put it away and say, you know, next, I will check it at the next traffic light or I will at my next de destination. And it's just a matter of self-control. Also, when people cross the road, I'm sometimes I'm shocked how people, people are so disconnected so absorbed in their phone that they are disconnected from the world around them. And they are, they are waiting at the traffic light to cross the road. The light goes green for the pedestrians and they just walk. Like a horse with those blinders on, they, they, just, they do not look left and right because they are, they are glued to, their, to, their, to the, the screen of their phone. It makes me cringe. For me, it's impossible. If I cross the road, my head is on a swivel. I look left, right, left, right, until I'm on the other side. Green light or no green light. <coughs> um, these are some very obvious examples, both related to traffic, but there's also a lot of conflict that we have in our lives um, 
because of the way that we act. And it's not a matter of good and bad, it's just a matter of a rational conclusion that whenever you engage in a certain way, it leads to people reacting in unpleasant ways that, that later you wish could have or should have been avoided, could have been avoided. We are only human. We are conditioned, each in our own unique ways. But we are now at the point, Patanjali says so, you are on the path of developing consciousness. If you pay attention, you notice that there is a pattern. You notice that every time when you, uh, when you come across people that, that are not nice to you, that cause you um, agony, even long after uh, those people are gone, you notice that there is something, that there is a pattern, that there is something in you that triggers this in other people. We're talking about the kleshas here, the law of action and reaction, the law of cause and effect. And when you start seeing that pattern, you have to honestly look in the mirror and say, what can I do differently? What can I change that, that helps me to avoid these kind of situations? And it, it will just make your life a whole lot more pleasant when you develop the power to simply not let it happen anymore, regardless of how you were conditioned in the past, no matter how uh, sad or traumatic the experiences were that led to that kind of um, um, actions, behavior, you can control it. You can canalize it into something positive, something constructive. And it's all based on consciousness. So Patanjali here is saying, you now have this consciousness. If it's still happening, you really have to reconsider. Or, <laughs> a little bit more uh, simplified, you're stupid if you still let it happen. Disease. When we are young, we are full of health, but when you develop a little bit of common sense, you know that one day, one day you are going to be old like your grandparents. Inevitably, we all someday will get old. Now, generally, when you look at old people, after a certain age, they start developing diseases, one after the other. And you go, to the pharmacy and you see especially aged people coming out of the pharmacy with big plastic bags full of medicine which they have to take three times a day every day for the rest of their life. So aging comes with disease, that is just a fact. It's unavoidable but what we can do is while we are young healthy and strong is to build on that to stay strong and healthy further down the road healthy food regular exercise it requires discipline but it is a huge difference when you are 70 or 80 years old when you are suffering all kinds of diseases life is not pleasant anymore but if you're still in relative good health because you took care of yourself, you can still enjoy every day while being old. So the misery that has not come, it can and must be avoided by having some foresight, by the power of anticipation, because you have the ability to draw a line into the future. You have the ability to put one and one together and make two out of it. 
It's about common sense. I know people, I have smoked when I was young, but I stopped when I realized how bad it is. And I, I know people in my own family. My, my, my dad died because of lung cancer. There are still people who smoke. I cannot get my head around that. If you, you're, it's so clear how devastating the, 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 the outcome sooner or later will be because most people who smoke do develop uh, terrible disease, usually lung cancer, but also it can lead to other terrible disease. I can't get my head around why people do not do the effort, at least do the effort to try to, to stop that kind of destructive behavior. But it's difficult. I smoke myself. I know that it is difficult. But um, if you persist, anything is possible. Take control. Sutra 17. The cause of that which is to be avoided is the union of the seer and the seen. Now this is something that Patanjali has mentioned before. The union of the seer and the seen is um, when, when you observe through the crown chakra, your observation is objective. You just establish facts, not emotions. But when we identify, which is the union of the seer and the seen, when we, ident when we start identifying with what we are looking at, Ego becomes involved and it results in an emotion. And that is, of course, uh, natural. It is human. We all function like that. But we now find out that it is also the reason why uh, things go off the rails, why, why we suffer from, from emotions and, and conflicts and and. All forms of misery are, are in the end uh, caused by this process where we start identifying with something. There are not many people who stay calm when things happen that um, most cause most people to freak out or to panic. When you... When you're power of observation is more and more based on observation from the crown chakra and less inclined less inclined to, to, to come down and then identify with what you're looking at you will be that one person that stays calm when everybody else panics or freaks out that is, that is a quality that very naturally comes as a result of your yoga practice. Also, as a result of this new quality of not identifying with the objects that or the situations that you are looking at, you quickly come to the essence of the situation. When you come, when you touch the essence of a situation or a person that causes mayhem in you, that causes uh, uh, panic in you or another uh, strong movement of emotion, when you have the ability to calmly observe what is going on, you come to the essence of the situation, 
And when you understand what you're looking at, there is no ground for emotion. It is the identification without really understanding what is going on that causes the, the heavy movement of energy translated in, in emotion. The, 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 the freaking out or the panic or, or the huge anger that can occur in situations. Any kind of emotion. This applies to any kind of emotion. The, the, the example that I used before is being pushed out of the way uh, strongly with an elbow. If you identify with the situation, with your misery at that moment, you are not allowed to, to connect with the essence of what is going on. It is your ability to calmly observe that allows you to come to make soul connection with that person and understand why this happened. And when you have that kind of understanding, it's impossible to be angry, to stay angry. Sutra 18, the scene, the objective side of manifestation, consists of the elements and sense organs, is the nature of cognition, activity and stability, sattva, rajas and tamas, and has for its purpose providing the purusha with experience and liberation. Now what follows is a little bit uh, uh, um, technical, uh, scientific, with all the chakras involved and, and, and the, the elements and uh, the functions of the chakras and what have you. But that is not so very important. That is a little bit distracting. And it doesn't really make clear what this sutra is trying to convey. First, Patanjali makes the observation that technically everything consists out of a mix of energy. And there are three different conditions, tamas, rajas, and sattva. And everything, not only every material, but every situation exists out of a certain mix of tamas, rajas, and sattva. And it is it is the amount of each of these uh, conditions that determines the way that it manifests. So that is not so very interesting because not really of practical value. What is very practical and interesting is the last sentence. It has for its purpose providing the Purusha with experience and liberation. Everything that happens in our lives, when we start dealing with it in an objective way, because that is important, provides us with new insights, provides us with new experience. According to Patanjali, that leads to liberation. This sutra, and, and another one that will follow soon, is telling us the world is your playground. But it only becomes of use, positive use, constructive use, when we start playing consciously. Before that, we just we are subjected to life and whatever life throws at us. But from now on, we do everything consciously. We undergo everything consciously. As a result, we develop enormous insight and wisdom. And a very important result of this the source of insight and wisdom is that it allows you to anticipate future misery. And as a result of that insight, you can decide not to let that take place. You can avoid it. 
the enlightenment, the experience, the, the liberation that he's mentioning here, liberation only occurs when we free ourselves from our urges and tendencies. When we free ourselves from, from our tendency to identify with everything that we are confronted with and as a result losing ourselves in emotions, in misery. Liberation is, is to be free from that because you rise above it. And instead of being touched by it, you learn from it. You extract wise lessons in life from it, allowing you to avoid future misery. Sutra 19, another rather technical scientific approach. The stages of the gunas are the particular, the universal, the differentiated, and the undifferentiated. The gunas are sattva, tamas, and rajas, the three conditions. But this is about how, how situations manifest. Uh, Patanjali, uh, in another sutra, alluded to this uh, manifestation. And there are stages of manifestation. And what, what most human beings observe in their limited way of observing the world around them is the stage where there is full-blown manifestation. We understand that we are in trouble once we are in the middle of it. We don't see it coming. Now, because we become more sensitive, more conscious, we actually develop the ability to detect trouble while it is still in a latent stage, while it is still a seed that hasn't been watered yet, allowing it to manifest. So he, he's naming four stages here, but what that means is that you develop the sensitivity that allows you to anticipate things from happening before they even started to form. Now most people in some way, maybe instinctively, in some cases already do this, but as a result of your increasing sensitivity, you will apply this more and more in your life. Because you're more alert, you will be able to avoid most of the unpleasant situations simply because you know where they start. Simply because you, you feel that the potential is already there before it has even started to take shape. And that will allow you to abort the process, to, to withdraw yourself from the process, to not go along with it, or to, or to stimulate it from, from happening. You simply do not participate in that process anymore. And therefore you do not become a victim of that. Questions? It's a lot to digest. If you have questions further down the road, you can always let me know. <coughs> Very often people say, I have a stupid question, but, but there are no stupid questions. Question is valid whenever you have that question. So do not hesitate. Okay, short break. <laughs>